if we rig the arm right now, we run the risk of making it difficult later to change the hands. So the arm is waving. And then we now know how to how to put the hand on the last bone so that it follows. Now, if you have a, a an arm that's that's waving and you want it to point at something, right? So it's waving and then it points up. You can add another hand, um, but you have to go back to the arm being straight. You can't draw the hand over here because it, it won't work, watch. So I'll make the arm longer. So I go one frame, I'll turn on the onion skin. I'm on the hand. If I try to draw the hand here, You could see that the the first hand is is disconnected, right? And then when I move this arm, um, that's that's what happened, right? So. Um, What I'd have to do is go back and before I draw this second hand at all, I'd have to re-straighten the arm. And usually you can do that by clicking onto the, um, the rigging tool again. So now I can go in and draw a second hand where the arm should be. See how it's telling me, here's your original arm and here's the arm that you rigged. It's, it's you know, it's kind of, it's kind of confusing. So, oops. On the wrong layer. There. Now I'm on the right layer. What you can also do is just drag the arm out of the bone and then redraw the hand. Have any of you guys had this problem? Not this specific problem, but uh, similar. Mm -hmm. All right, we got our pointer finger. We'll extend the pointer finger. Now let's see what happens when we throw the arm back into this bone. And the hand. So what I would do is, it's, it's, it's fixed, but what I would do in the future is with all of my arms straight, legs straight, right? With, with 
things before I rig rigging, I would save till the very end. I'd have all of my different hands ready to go because you could see here my hands are now acting like uh, the mouth, right? It looks like, you know, I can switch back and forth because I've drawn two hands in here. So it's acting like a lip sync, right? I can, I could say, all right, for, you know, so many frames, I'm going to have him point. And then for so many frames, I'm going to have him open-handed, right? So hit play. So, you know, you could draw as many things as you want in here and it'll keep adding into your library and you can switch between them, right? Um, and I think the best example for that is just, you know, hands. Feet, feet are pretty constant and you'll just put an anchor point on the ankle and you're good to go. You know, you throw the, if this were a leg and these were leg bones, you just throw the foot right on top of the leg, right? So here's the hand right on top of the arm, uh, foot on top of the leg. Um, any questions about rigging? Pretty straightforward. Um, the brushes. So you've got many. And I typically use the first one just because I can do whatever I want and change the, the size of it, right? So if I want to do... Um, you know, some transparencies, and I want to start layering those transparencies. Um, what I can do, and that's what I've done with the background here. Let me pull this camera back so we can see it. All I'm doing is, you know, I'm I'm just inking, you know, I'm I'm with heavy, really wide um, brushes and a question. layering and layering the black there. Yeah, go ahead. So when we start a project in Harmony, you know how it gives like that arbitrary square, like a rectangle? Yeah. How do you how do you work around that or like work with that? to make your scene like this. Is that, is that you understand what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. I typically, okay, so let me start a new project then. How about that? New scene, demo. Um, no, don't save that. So you're just talking about this rectangle right yeah but mine is like a outlined like thick but yes that rectangle it's it's this probably the same as this one um so what i do you, you're all given a drawing layer and typically i like to go with some blue ink and just lay out a scene right so um let's say um, we're doing a house and um, a street and and there's sort of a path, you know, we're making a front door. Um, some clouds, some trees, uh, maybe there's a car over here. So I'm, I'm acting as if um, this is my canvas because it is, it's the default cam. I don't have a camera in here yet, right? Um, and so when I start adding a layer here, like um, sky, let's say, I can come in here with some, 
you know, some pretty big brushes. Right, and I can start to paint, right? And the name of the game is variation, right? Um, I could start throwing some, yeah, some alpha layers in here. Okay, so let's see what this looks like rendered. And now let's see what the sky looks like with a blur on it, right? So I can make this crisp line blend better into this one, right? So I can insert a blur effect, right? Or a transparency, right? A blur. Let's make it two. Let's do more. Let's do five. Okay. It's really starting to blend together. Ten. Um, and uh, don't forget, I can't see it unless I turn the render on, right? So you could keep adding and adding your effects and it doesn't do anything if you're in the, uh, the working view, in the vector. Um, okay, so I can hide the sky, right? I still have my drawing layer here. I can add a house. Maybe I'll start using the line tool. And we've gone over this, you know, about um, the importance of, I'm gonna turn that light table on. Detail. Um, why am I putting these these underdrawings, these these lines in here? Because it's going to guide me um, as I move forward. So what I've what I've created here is like the the furthest point out that I can go with my camera. I can't zoom out anymore because I'll see the the edges of the house here and it won't look right. So. So these should all fill. <laughs> and you'll notice in, in backgrounds, right? I'm not I'm not going really bold. It's it's entirely up to you, up to you, but my characters are gonna wanna stand out. So I'm gonna try to mud the colors a little bit. Okay. And of course I can come in here and, you know, I could, I could do any number of additions here. To really make this house happen. And, you know, a typical background is a painting and you're going to you're going to you know be working on it for 
for a while. Um, you know, you're going to get your Netflix going in the background. You're going to watch um, Doro Hidoro. What else is what else is playing right now? Dragon's um, what is it called? Dragon's Code. Uh, Dragon Prince, maybe, or is there something else? What else something is on? else. I think it's Dragon's Code or something. Dragon's Dogma. Dragon's Dogma. That's it. Um, I was I was looking at that one just for its visuals. They do they do weird stretching on those characters um, uh, yeah so I could come in here and I could fix this door up right do whatever I want to it Easier thing would have been just put a door on top of that, right? So when I go into render view, turn my sky back on. Okay. The house is in the sky. That's weird. Same thing. Um, I could put a blur on the sky. Oh, sorry, on the house, right? So why not? Because my characters in front of the house um, are going to be in clear view. That's too much, maybe one. Okay. And on and on we go. Um, so this original rectangle that you asked about, that's just my default, um, my default canvas. But when I add a camera, which we've done before, Let it go. It's inside the house. I don't want that. I can peg it. I have to always peg it because then I can actually move this thing Wherever I want and do you go. have to use the transform tool when you pet like when you do it, or that that's just a choice? You gotta. You have to use it. Use the trans. You, like make, turn on the transform tool. Yeah, right here. Yeah, I okay. grab it. I, I grab this, sure. and then I grab. I highlight the line and try to grab that yellow line. Um, okay. Now, when I move the camera in space, right? When I start zooming in. Um, extend all these when I start zooming in turn the onion skin off um, nothing will slow down your animation more than a moving camera because what you're doing is you're turning all of these layers, again, these are all vectors, into 24 fr frames per second, right? And so as you render this scene, it's going to go one, two, three, four, super slow. And if you're doing, you know, 2000 frames, just be ready to sit there forever. Um, 
So what I typically do is I don't move a camera. Sometimes I do because it looks really cool when you have a, a lot of detail um, in a background. And um, let's see if I have an example. Exports. Uh, where are we? Scene five. Let me show you. Wait, what? Oh, what is it called? <laughs> is it this? Yeah. Okay. When I when I play this trailer at the end, you'll see. We aren't living in, uh, according to even the most. These are all static. Forms of democracy. I feel we are in a state of civil war. That's moving, right? That was. That's a scene where there's a slow move in, um, and we could watch that. So that's motion tracked. Um, there's a little uh, piece of paper taped on the the back of this car, and then these are motion tracked, and so the character is motion tracked to to that. But the pan shot is coming soon. Yeah. So there's so much detail in that room. Um, whenever I show that room, I want to, I always end up wanting to do a, a slow pan. And that will take forever. Um, just because, you know, the more detail and uh, the more it has to um, transfer that from vector to bitmap. So there's your camera. Um, I could keep doing transparencies. Like, let's assume I want to have, like, fog. Okay. Again, I'm still using um, the first brush. I could go in and I could grab any any brush in here. I could get a more foggy brush, right? That's a foggy brush. Um, I could get some transparency in the color. And then I could make it big. So if I do just one, like I'm not letting up the brush at all. Like if I don't let up at all, I can go over and over and it doesn't really matter. It comes out as a single blob. But then if I go in again, you can see that on the second pass, um, just like a watercolor, it'll it'll show that it's another pass on top of another pass, right? Um, so if we look at it as a through the render view, because sometimes just for a For these reasons, it's it's beneficial, right? I can see what the actual 
end result is going to look like. And then I could even blur the fog, right? Yeah. And, you know, it might even look better if I started moving the fog across slowly. Um, so we talked about rigging, brushes, backgrounds, blurs, transparencies, transparencies in the colors. You can also, of course, add transparencies this way, but I just prefer to do it in the color itself. Glow is a weird one that some of you might want to do at some point. So let's say there's um, let's say there's a neon sign back here, All right? So let's make a neon sign. And we'll get our standard brush and we'll come in here and we'll call it Big Al's Steakhouse. All right, so there's Big Al's. Um, what I could do, and I've done this before, so what I would probably do here is duplicate it so I have an actual red one and a glowing one, right? So I could duplicate this. So I got two, neon and neon one. And this one on top, I'm gonna make it glow. And the glow always turns white. So what I do is I right click on it and go into the properties. And we're still in the render view so you can see it. And then um, I use the source color, right? And then I can push it out a bunch. So five, five. Okay. And then it looks better if I put the other one on top, right? So it's crisper. And then, um, you know, we've got transparencies, we've got blurs, we've got glow. Um, what else? What else we got in here? Um, the other things I don't really care about because shadows I like to put myself. You know, if I were going to put a shadow in here, um, you know, so let's say. Let's say we have a light. All right, if we have a light, we, we could have a light coming out of here and then we could have um, some red glow here and some maybe some shadow behind it. So let's paint the light. Um, 
And then this color here, we could cut that out and we could paste it and this could be like the light glow. And we'll make a new color for that. It's probably yellow. Oops. A lot of blur, uh, a lot of glow, sorry. It's still in render view. Again, we have a problem, right? We have to right click on the layer, use the source color. Now we can start to give it some juice, right? And then we could even come in here onto the the light itself and paint it red. Or on the on the light glow, it's, well, shoot, where is it? The neon, the neon with the with the glow. Yeah. So if we wanted to, we could start. And I'm drawing on the neon right now, right? Oh, it's because it's below the light. Let's put the light under it. There. You get the point. And the same thing for the shadow. Since I've already got a glow happening on the on that. What I typically do is just make a whole shadow, a layer for all the shadows. So this house turned into some sketchy bar by the ocean or something. Um, so any questions about that? Brushes, brush sizes, backgrounds, uh, muted colors in your backgrounds, variation, detail, blurs and transparencies, uh, moving the virtual camera. Any questions about that? Um, and as you move forward, the, the less rigging you do, the better. You know, the less uh, problems you make and create for yourself, the better. So think about yourself as a graphic novelist, you know, creating cells in a comic um, and then just animating a few moments here and there within, within the still, you know, uh, and keep moving forward. Um, Did we talk about uh, libraries and building your library? Yes, sir. We did. Yeah, no. No. 
I can't hear anybody. <laughs> what? No, we didn't talk about that. We did not. Okay, oh, so good. All right. You answered a question to somebody about the library, but you didn't go too in depth on it. Okay. I thought we touched on it. So um, look at my library right here. It's pretty big because I just keep building it and building it and building it, right? It just keeps going and going and going from one project to the next, right? So let's say I want a character to walk into Big Al's and I'm, and I'm like, all right, let's, let's make this guy walk into the bar, right? Um, well, I can easily just, you know, turn off my render view so everything's in real time get his proportions about so, you know, and and what's going to happen, this guy's going to just kind of shrink as he walks in and opens the door and goes into the bar, okay? So <clears throat> he doesn't have any arms and hands and things because what I'll do is I'll just redraw those depending on what's going on, okay? Um, but I can pull any number of characters in here and quickly animate arms and um, do lip sync. And you'll notice that this guy, a drug in, has a head and a body, right? Versus um, that's just a head. Thought it was more. Versus this guy who's got so many layers. And he's neatly tucked away in a folder, right? But um, what I can do is uh, take a character <clears throat> and let's pretend like, um, you know, this is a finished character and, you know, everything's worked out. Um, I could take this and drag the layer into my Harmony Advanced library over here, but it's not going to work right now because it's got a padlock on it and everybody's has a padlock on it. And that's the default for some reason. So I have to right click it and I have to write to modify. All right. Let me write down libraries real quick. So once I do that, I can drag any character into my library and name it and save it. And it's, it's particular to your computer. So in animation two, when we start working in teams and you're, um, you know, some, one of you is doing character A, one of you is doing character B, and they start talking to each other, you can give each other your characters and we can build scenes together this way. But for you working solo, um, you can put a lot, a lot of detail into your character and then save it in your library and pull it over anytime you want. Because with this guy, with any of them, but with this guy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and like take his pupils out, right? And take his mouth off. Right. And I'm going to start over, right? I'm, I can redraw some basic pupils and um, I can redraw a mouth and put it on top of a finished body, right? Um, so now I'm, I'm working real quick. And this is what a studio does, you know. Um, so it just depends on the scene, you know, if you, if you have a character sort of like leaning over, right? So I have, 
I have one where this guy is leaning on a, on a case. So go ahead and save that. So for this scene, right? Um, what I did was, you know, I drug in this guy's whole situation, right? His body and his head. And then I wanted him to lean on this counter and um, you could see he's, He's moving his hands a little bit. Um, oh, sorry, it's in render view, so you can't see anything. So he's moving his hands a little bit. This guy's talking. His plant hair is rigged. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of action going on. Um, but I wanted him to lean so. You know, I took his body and, and erased his midsection and redrew this part and then attached some legs. Probably redrew the legs. Redrew some arms to fit this scenario, right? And I've put this cup in a number of scenes too. You know, um, so all of your characters can be can be reused that way. Any questions about the library? Pretty straightforward. Okay. All right, so we did rigs, brushes, backgrounds, blurs, transparencies, virtual camera, and library. We looked at everybody's um, first independent projects. Um, you are all um, supposed to be presenting your storyboards, right, and your character sketches. So let's see. So let's do that on Thursday. Um, starting today, you've got one, two, three weeks, right? We're going to have this probably due at the end of Thursday. So you'll have a little more than three weeks to, to do 30 seconds, which is doable. Um, yeah. So let's get to work. I'm here if you need me. Just uh, ask for me. And let me turn this recording off.